how many processes should a web browser create? So how many processes do you think the web browser you're running now is using? Yeah. As many tabs, so one per tab. Is that the right answer? That's how many it should have. Or that's how many it does? OK. Do we think one per tab? Does anyone think less than one per tab? OK, good. So maybe older browsers less than one per tab. Maybe newer browsers we want one per tab. Do we want more than one per tab? Is one enough? OK, good. So maybe there's a couple extra processes that manage all those extra tabs. So we need some more. Good. So maybe we, we do want more than one thread per tab. This is not a real simple question, right? And a, a lot of the answer, and, and you've been sort of getting at that, right? It's a trade-off that depends on the cost of doing different things. Right? Processes are not free. Right? It's quite expensive to create a process. It's expensive to manage it. It's using more resources than if you were running all the code in one process. But they give you some benefits. Right? And the important benefits that we've talked about is memory isolation, as well as this illusion of things happening at the same time. So the answer to this changes over time. If you went back in the deep, dark, dark ages before Google, AltaVista was everyone's favorite search engine. Processes waste a lot of memory and CPU. Right? In the 1990s, the typical machine people had, you really didn't want to waste memory and CPU to have extra processes unless you really needed them. One was probably the right answer. Right? Maybe, maybe you know, more than one occasionally, but one was probably the right answer, and you would design a browser. There was no reason you really needed to have more than one process. So this was the answer in the 1990s, and this was Internet Explorer as well as what was the predecessor to Freenet? Netscape, the one before uh, Mozilla. And the answer started to change in the 2000s. Computers got more powerful. The cost of having processes started to get small relative to the cost of other things. Chrome was launched in about 2008, I think. And they released this great comic book as part of launching Chrome. And the comic book actually explains most of the technical concepts we'll cover in this class. So you can think of it if you want another required textbook, you can read the Google Chrome comic book. Part of what they explain in the comic book is why you want to have more processes. So their design was, well, we want our browser to be more stable. And we don't think we can write code that doesn't crash. So we're going to separate our browser into separate processes where if one of them crashes, it won't crash the whole browser. The other reason for our processes was to make it more secure, that they want to make it so each page is isolated from other pages and they have their own memory space. So what's running in each tab is a separate process. That leads to a design like this, where you do need one process to manage everything, and then you have separate processes for each tab. And this was a, a big thing, like turning Firefox into a multi-process browser is still a big challenge. It's not an easy thing to take a browser designed as a single process browser and make it multi-process. So they talked about you know, starting from scratch and designing a browser based around the capabilities of machines in 2008 and the greater need for security and robustness. What should the answer be today? Do you think Chrome's answer is still the right answer? What's different about machines today from Say 2008, have they changed much? OK, good. So the interfaces have changed, right? Where touch screens are a different kind of interface than laptop without a touch screen or desktop display. How does that affect the number of processes you might want your browser to have? I'm not sure touches are more frequent than mouse clicks or different to handle, really. So, so I don't think it has much impact on the answer to this question. What else has changed? OK, good. So more people have more cores on their machines. How does that impact the answer to how many processes your browser should have? Right, so the answer is that the reason Chrome said it wanted more processes were for security and robustness. We definitely want something that's going to allow us to, to use our hardware resources well. Right? And if we have multiple processes, well, they can all run on separate cores. Right? We can keep our cores busy. Do we need multiple processes to keep all our cores busy? So remember, process is both isolating memory space and giving you this abstraction that you own the whole CPU. If you want to just keep the cores bills busy, do you need multiple processes? You don't really, so you, you, you need multiple threads, 
right? So you certainly need to be able to do your execution in parallel if you're going to keep cores busy. They don't necessarily need separate memory spaces. So maybe the answer for 2010 should be, well, it should be one process with enough threads to keep your cores busy. And that assumes that you can solve these other problems, the robustness and the security problems, without needing more processing. You certainly want to find ways to keep all these cores busy. Even on your mobile devices today, the iPhone 5C, you've got two cores, a Galaxy, Samsung, you have four to eight cores. So you have a little trade-off between colors and cores today. But I think engineers will overcome that. But it's definitely going to be the case that any device that you're doing any web browsing on is likely to have at least a handful of cores. And it's got eight sort of general purpose cores, probably at least 32 GPU cores. And your desktop or laptop is having hundreds of GPU cores. So there's a lot more than just a few cores on your machine. The one big trade-off that's left once you solve the colors one, even if you've got a bunch of cores, especially on a device like a mobile phone, you don't necessarily want to always keep them as busy as possible, because that does use power. So if you want to save the battery, you're willing to make things run a little slower and not keep all your cores busy. But as long as you're not running out of battery, and certainly if, if you're um, plugged in, you really want to keep all your cores busy. Right? There's no sense having human users sit around waiting for something to happen when they're core sitting idle in your machine. So this suggests you don't want to have just one process per tab, uh, certainly not just one thread per page, because right? usually there's only one page that someone's actually looking at and interacting, and that's running a lot of JavaScript programs. You want to have that one page be able to run on as many cores as possible. 2008 wasn't that long ago. So certainly people knew about multi-core and had machines that had multiple cores in 2008. So why was this not the answer that Google came up with in 2008? So when they say starting from scratch, what did they really mean? Yeah. OK, so that's part of where they got their code base from. What, what were the programming tools they were using? Pretty much things that were around at least you know, 30 or 40 years ago. Yeah, mostly C, some C++. So their definition of starting from scratch was, well, starting from scratch, but sticking with programming tools that were developed in the 60s. And that meant that you couldn't really come up with this answer if you still wanted security and robustness. Because to get multiple threads in those archaic languages, you're giving up on security and robustness. You're ending up with all the kinds of bugs that happen in multi-threaded C programs. So if your goal is to have a, a browser that has multiple threads that use the res machine resources as effectively as possible, you probably want to build it with tools that don't have those problems. And this is not the case for the tools that were used to build Chrome. Right? They were mostly built based on C and descendants of C that were designed to fit in this 4K machine in the 1960s, 1970s. Why do the Rust stickers have gears around them? Work in progress. So it's really true it's a work in progress. What the gears represent is servo. The main motivation behind Mozilla building Rust is to build a better browser engine. And the large part of the goal behind that is to be able to have a browser engine that can run an individual page using lots of threads in a way that's safe and robust. Because on an individual page, now we've got code from lots of different parties, right? lots of third party scripts, lots of code that doesn't necessarily trust each other, but certainly code that needs to be interacting and running at the same time for the user to get the best experience. This is really starting from scratch, right? as opposed to starting from the way, the way Chrome started. And starting from scratch is really hard. This is why none of you are running Servo, I think, today, because you can probably open maybe one or two web pages, and nothing else is going to work yet. So starting from scratch is really hard, but there are reasons for starting from scratch if you really want to use machine resources well. 